What's up guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. We continue our biology playlist. In the previous videos, we have talked about cleavage, blastulation, implantation, gastrulation, and today it's time to talk about neurulation, how your nervous system came to be. Just remember, the neural tube will give you the central nervous system and the neural crest will give you the peripheral nervous system. This is the biology playlist. Please watch these videos in order. Today is video number 28. What happened when the sperm met the ovum fertilization and then zygote formation and then cleavage? You get the morula. After this, the blastocyst, hashtag blastulation. And then the blastocyst will be implanted into the posterior superior aspect of the endometrium of the wall of the uterus of mommy. This is called implantation. Next, you have bilaminar embryo, two layers, epiblast, hypoblast. Thank you. And then the trilaminar embryo, endoderm, mesoderm, and exoderm. Your entire nervous system came from the ectoderm. A great person commented on the previous video and said, Hey, Medicosis, why didn't you include the time frame? You're right. So here's the time frame. Zygote, fertilization, this is day one. Okay. The morula happens around day three. Blastocyst is day four. Implantation begins around day six or day seven, and it's completed by the 12th day. Okay, so now we are almost done with two weeks. In the third week, you will get the neural tube, which is part of the ectoderm. And of course, now you have the trilaminar embryo. Bilaminar embryo, epiblast, hypoblast. Which one will be the actual embryo? The epiblast. It will give you the embryo itself and a primitive streak. What is the function of the primitive streak? It induces the differentiation of the embryo into three layers, endoderm, mesoderm, ectoderm. Endo on the inside, ecto means on the outside, meso means in the middle. And that's why we refer to your midbrain by the word meso, because your midbrain is in the middle of your forebrain and hindbrain. So what does the word meso mean? In the middle. But please don't get it twisted. Mesoderm is part of the brain, therefore part of the ectoderm. When you were young and tender, we told you that, remember, it was the building unit of the human body, the cell. A group of cell is called a tissue. A group of tissue is called an organ. A group of organs will form a system, and the systems will carry body functions. You remember the tissue? Yeah. How many types of tissue do you have? I have four types. I have epithelium, I have connective, I have muscle tissue, and nerve tissue. Okay. The epithelium arises from, well, it depends, mostly endoderm. But if you're talking about the epidermis of your skin, that's going to be ectoderm. Okay, connective tissue, mesoderm. Muscle tissue, mesoderm. Nerve tissue, ectoderm. Isn't that beautiful? As you know, your nervous system is central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. The central includes brain and spinal cord. Okay, anything that comes out of the brain or out of the spinal cord is peripheral. Example, cranial nerve. Oh, this is a nerve that comes out of the brain. That's peripheral. How about spinal nerve? It's a nerve that comes out of the spinal cord. That's a peripheral nervous system. Your brain is made of three parts, forebrain, midbrain, or hindbrain. If you are young, you can call it cerebrum, cerebellum, and brainstem. If you're super sophisticated, it's the prosencephalon, mesencephalon, and rhombencephalon. Again, the word meso means mid. Then you have the spinal cord in the neck. The spinal cord is called the cervical spinal cord. Then the thoracic in your thorax. Then the lumbar, then the sacral, then the coccygeal. Tell me about the peripheral nervous system. Okay, cranial nerves, you have 12 pairs. Some of them are sensory, some of them are motor, some of them are both. Spinal nerves are 31 pairs, eight in the cervical area, thoracic, lumbar, sacral, coccygeal. All of your spinal nerves are mixed. They have sensory, they have motor at the same time. Here is your brain, right? Draw a line in the sand. Anything in front is motor. Anything behind is sensory, with some exceptions. What is the name of this central line in the sand? Central sulcus. Do we see this in adults? Yes, you do. Here is a cross section in your spinal cord. Anything in front, motor. Anything behind, sensory, with few exceptions. What is the name of this beautiful line in the sand? Sulcus limitans. Do you see this in adult? No, it's only an embryological structure. Once you grow up, it disappears. But the concepts behind it remain the same. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Don't believe me? Consider this. Let's say you want to move your arm. Okay, I want to move. Motor. Oh, you have to start here, anterior to the 
line in the sand, anterior to the central sulcus. Okay, I want to feel. I want to feel heat, cold, etc. Feelings are sensory. They have to be behind the line. I want to move my eyes to the right and to the left. Movement is motor in front of the line. Okay, metacosis, I want to see and visualize your beautiful slides. Okay, sensory. Vision is a sensation. Behind. I'm talking right now. Oh, broca. Talking is a motor function. And you are listening to me and understanding me. Understanding is a sensation. Wernicke. Behind the line. Motor is anterior. Sensory is posterior. Nuff said. Spinal cord, baby. Draw the line in the sand. Anything behind sensory. Anything in front. Motor. Look at this. Oh, what is this? This is the dorsa ramus. Do you think it's sensory or motor? Oh, it's behind the line. It's gonna be sensory. Duh. How about the dorsal root ganglion? Oh, sensory. It's part of the afferent fiber. Let's say I want to kick you in the butt. Oh, if I want to kick you, that's a motor function. I will never do this. It's just a metaphor. Motor function, therefore afferent. That's a ventral or anterior ramus. It's in front of the line. The afferent and the afferent will meet in one bundle called the spinal nerves. And that's why spinal nerves are always mixed. They have sensory, they have motor in the same nerve. What is the structural unit of the nervous system? It's called the neuron, and the neuron has soma and axon. Okay, a collection of somas in the central nervous system is known as a nucleus. A collection of somas in the peripheral nervous system is called a ganglion. Oh, that's why the dorsal root ganglion was outside of the spinal cord. Yes, indeed, because it has to be peripheral. Okay, a collection of axons in the CNS is called a tract, in the peripheral nervous system, it's a nerve. And that's why cranial nerves are peripheral. Spinal nerves are peripheral. Trilaminar embryo, endoderm, mesoderm, ectoderm. Okay, tell me about the endoderm. The epithelium of your gut, the epithelium of your respiratory system, and parts of the heart. Okay, endoderm will also give you many auxiliary features of the gut. Pancreas, liver, gallbladder, thymus gland, thyroid gland, parathyroid gland. Thank you so much, endoderm. Tell me about the mesoderm. The key word here is connective tissue, muscle tissue. Your bones are mesoderm. Your cartilages, mesoderm. Muscles, mesoderm. Tendons, mesoderm. Blood, mesoderm. Lymph, mesoderm. Blood vessels, mesoderm. Lymph vessels, mesoderm. The dermis, mesoderm. Adrenal cortex, mesoderm. The dura mater is mesoderm. Please be careful. The dermis is mesoderm. However, the epidermis is ectoderm from the surface ectoderm. Okay. Adrenal cortex is mesoderm. All right. Adrenal medulla. Oh, that's a modified ganglion. Oh, that's a nervous tissue. Oh, neuroectoderm, which came from the ectoderm. The dura mater is mesoderm. It's very strong. Yeah, strong, powerful connective tissue. The delicate, tender, pia and arachnoid maters are hugging the brain. You can consider them as if they are part of the brain. Oh, ectoderm. Now tell me about the ectoderm. We have two types of ectoderm. Surface ectoderm, neuroectoderm. The neuroectoderm will give you your entire nervous system. Central nervous system comes from the neural tube. Peripheral nervous system comes from the neural crest. What is a ganglion? Uh, a ganglion is a collection of somas inside the peripheral nervous system. Oh, that's why all of the ganglia came from the neural crest, because this is peripheral nervous system. What are the cells that myelinate the central nervous system? Oligodendrocytes. They came from the neural tube because it's a source of the central nervous system. What are the cells that myelinated the peripheral nervous system? Schwann cells. They came from the neural crest because it's peripheral, baby. To help the neurons, you need some glial cells. That's why you have them everywhere. Ependymal cells are inside the brain. They line the ventricles. They make the cerebrospinal fluid. They have to come from the same CNS origin, the neural tube. How about the leptomeninges? Oh, they are around the brain, so they are more peripheral than the center. That's why they are neural crest. That was the story of the neuroectoderm. How about the surface ectoderm? Uh, it's not necessarily part of the nervous system. So, epidermis of the skin. Oh, yeah, this is surface. Hair nail of the skin. Oh, that is surface. Sweat glands, memory glands, parotid glands. Yeah, surface. Lens of the eye. It helped me see different surfaces. Ah, oh. I mean, not funny. Olfactory epithelium of the nose. Yeah, help me smell those odors on the surface of your sweaty skin. 
epithelium of the mouth. Of course, the mouth is on this. It's like no, near the surface. This is how you eat. The mouth is in close proximity with the outside world. How about the anal cavity? Also with cl in close proximity with the outside world. The upper orifice and your lower orifice. How did the neural tube and neural crest came to be? All right, look at this. Perfect. This is the neural tube border. And this is the neural plate. Thank you. And this is the surface ectoderm on the outside and on the outside. This entire thing is the ectoderm. Where is the mesoderm? All of this. The mesoderm has notochord in the middle and lateral plate mesoderm on the periphery. Now it will start to shape itself in order to become a cylinder. So it will start invaginating. Here is the neural crest. Here is the neural plate. When the neural plate forms a complete circle, we will call her the neural tube. Look at this beauty. This is the neural tube. And this is your neural crest. And this is your surface ectoderm. Your neural tube will become central nervous system, brain and spinal cord. Neural crest will become peripheral nervous system. If this is the brain, they will be cranial nerves. If this is the spinal cord, they will be spinal nerves. Surface ectoderm is skin. Let's talk about the brain. Okay, now the neural tube is just the brain. Perfect. Therefore, the nerves that are coming out of the brain are called cranial nerves. So what's the source of the brain? Neural tube. What are the sources of the cranial nerves? Neural crest. Thank you. What is this cavity inside the brain? Oh, these are the brain ventricles that contain cerebrospinal fluid. Okay. Central nervous system, peripheral nervous system. The neural tube will give you the central nervous system, the oligodendrocytes, which myelinate the central nervous system, glial cells, ependymal cells, which secrete the cerebrospinal fluid. How about the neural crest, the cranial nerve, because they are peripheral, Schwann cells, because they myelinate the peripheral, glial cells, and those who are hugging the brain called leptomeninges, P and arachnoid. How about the dura mater? That was mesoderm. In the second scenario, the neural tube is just the spinal cord. Okay, this is the spinal cord. What is this? Spinal nerves. What's the name of the cavity inside the spinal cord? The central canal of the spinal cord containing CSF. The neural tube will give you the spinal cord neurons and oligodendrocytes because they myelinate the central. And the neural crest will give you spinal nerves, peripheral, Schwann cells, myelinate the peripheral, and the leptomeninges because they also cover the spinal cord as well as the brain. Let's draw the line in the sand. Anything in front is going to be motor. Anything behind is going to be sensory. This is ventral. This is dorsal. What's the name of the line in the sand? Sulcus limitans. All of this was ectoderm. How about mesoderm? It gives you connective tissue, like muscles, right? Like my pair of vertebral muscles on both sides of the spinal cord, you bet. But how about the central structure called not notochord? The notochord will give you the central structure of the intervertebral disc, which is between one disc and the next disc. So it's between two vertebrae. Thank you. So the central nucleus pulposus came from the notochord which is part of the mesoderm. Surface ectoderm will give you the epidermis of the skin, hair, nail, etc. Next, the neural tube will give you brain and spinal cord, hashtag CNS. Neural crest will give you cranial nerves and spinal nerves, hashtag PNS. The neural crest will start to get fragmented into many segments. What's going on? But the neural tube will maintain its integrity and continuity. Oh, the neural crest is dividing even more. And this is the result. The neural tube in this case is the spinal cord. How about all of the neural crest cells? Oh, the peripheral nervous system here is the spinal nerves. And as you know, spinal nerve has dorsal ramus behind, ventral ramus in front. What is the name of this midline in the sand? It's called the sulcus limitans, baby. Behind it is sensory. In front of it is motor. How about the dorsal root ganglia? Is it part of the spinal cord? No, it's slightly to the outside of the spinal cord. It's peripheral nervous system. That's why it came from the neural crest. Okay. Dorsal root ganglia. Is it in front of the line or behind the line? It's behind the line. That's why it has sensory function. This is neuroanatomy as it should be. Unlike your woke professor with his PowerPoint. This is your neural tube, okay? Yeah, all right. On top, it will give you the brain. At the bottom, we'll give you the spinal cord. We get it. What do you mean by top? I mean cranial, towards your head. What do you mean by uh, caudal? It's like towards your rear end, your gluteal region, your sphincter. How many analogies do I have to give you before you get the point? Here is top, here is bottom. We call this anterior neuropore. And this, posterior neuropore. The neural tube was open, right? Yeah, it's a cylinder. Now it's time for it to close because this will be the brain and the brain has to be closed. Otherwise, CSF is going to keep leaking outside of the brain until you herniate and kill yourself. Same thing, the posterior neuropore 
has to end. And this is called the conus middleris, which is the lower end of the spinal cord. Look at this, the neural tube has closed. This is the anterior neuropore. Okay, close, thank you so much. And the posterior neuropore will close and the spinal cord is done. This is your brain, this is your spinal cord. Tell me about your brain. You have four brain, midbrain, hindbrain. If you are sophisticated, prosencephalon, mesencephalon, rhombencephalon. The prosencephalon will give you telencephalon and diencephalon. Mesencephalon is just the midbrain. Rhombencephalon is metin and myelin. What does the word myelo mean? Myelo means in the core. What do you mean by core? I mean the spinal cord. Uh, why is the spinal cord core? Because it's in the center of the vertebral column. It's in the core of the column. Oh, then why is the medulla from the myelencephalon? Because the medulla is the continuation of the spinal cord. As you go up, you will hit the medulla oblongata. Pons and cerebellum, metencephalon. What was the name of the cavity inside that neural tube? In the brain, it's called ventricles. In the spinal cord, it's called the central canal of the spinal cord. Ventricles contain what? Cerebrospinal fluid. Who made the CSF? Ependymal cells of the choroid plexus. Where did they come from? They came from the neural tube, hashtag central nervous system. Let's talk about your neurons. All of your neurons have something called the neurolimal sheath. But not all of your neurons are myelinated. Some of them have myelin, some of them do not. If I have myelin, who's gonna myelinate the neuron? Well, it depends. If you're talking about central nervous system, you can thank your oligodendrocytes. How about peripheral nervous system? Schwann cells. Where did these come from? Neural tube. How about these? Neural crest. Gray matter versus white matter, okay. In the spinal cord, the gray matter is on the inside. But in the brain, the gray matter is on the outside and the white matter is on the inside. So they are vice versa. Okay, all right, we all, all of us know the H shape. It's easy to remember the spinal cord. The H is on the inside and therefore why it's on the outside, the brain is the other way around. Okay, now what's the significance of this? The significance is that myelin appears white and unmyelinated fibers appear gray. So in the spinal cord here, who's myelinated? Oh, the white, this is myelinated. Who is non-myelinated? Whatever is in the center. Who made that myelin? Since you are talking about the spinal cord, which is part of the central nervous system, you can thank your oligodendrocyte. Who made the myelin here in the brain? Oligodendrocytes. How about a lovely peripheral nerve like this? Then it's the Schwann cell. Some definitions. You know the gut? Oh yeah, of course I know my gut, my GI tract. Beautiful gastrointestinal. Okay, where did it come from? It came from something called the archenterone. How did it come to be? It came when we invaginated the blastocele and we have talked about this in the previous video. Okay, another definition, blastopore. What does the word blast mean? Immature. What does the word poor mean? It's a hole, an opening. It's an opening in the freaking archenterone. It's an opening in your gut. What do you call the opening in your gut? Well, I have two openings. I have the mouth and the anus. Okay, the blastopore in humans will give the anus, but the blastopore in other organisms such as the protosomes will give you the mouth because the protosomes have only one orifice. They only have a mouth. So the blastopore will give them the mouth. How about you, a human being, you have two orifices, upper orifice and lower orifice. And therefore the blastopore will only give you the anus and the mouth will come from this tomodium, but that's a story for another time. Why do we call these organisms protosomes? Because the word proto means primitive. They are primitive, they only have one orifice. But look at humans, oh, super sophisticated. Deuterosomes, what do deutero means? Deutero means two. In the Bible, there is a book called Deuteronomy which means pair, or couple, or dual, or duo, or two, or dose, or do. Get the point. How about stones? Remember your fifth grade science teacher? Oh, remember the structure of the leaf? Yeah, it had pores. What did you call those pores? Stomata. Yeah, the word stoma or stomata means mouth. So deutero, stomes, two openings. Hey, metacosis, uh, is your gut endoderm or mesoderm? And to quote a famous Canadian psychologist, well, it depends on what you mean by gut. If by gut you mean the epithelium that lines the inside of the gut, this is your endoderm. And the literature about this is absolutely clear. Haha. <laughs> but if you're talking about the connective tissue of the gut, if you're talking about muscles, if you're talking about subcutaneous tissue, fascia, etc., they come from the mesoderm. But if by gut you mean your gut feelings or your enteric nervous system, my enteric and submucosal plexus, 
Of course, it's a nervous system that comes from the bloody ectoderm. And this was clearly demonstrated in Alexander Solzhenitsyn's Gulag Archipelago. And that's that. The trilaminal embryo, pause and review. Endoderm derivatives, the epithelium of the gut, the epithelium of the respiratory system, parts of the heart, pancreas, liver, gallbladder, thymus, thyroid, parathyroid. Mesoderm, connective tissue, the word meso, or the word mesin, or mesenchymal, or mesenchymal, or whatever. All of this is mesodermal. Bones and cartilages, muscles and tendons, blood and lymph, blood vessels, lymph vessels, dermis, cortex, dura. Ectoderm, you have the surface ectoderm and the neuroectoderm. We're done with the neuroectoderm. Let's talk about the surface ectoderm. Epidermis of the skin, hair and nail of the skin, sweat glands, memory glands, parotid glands near the skin, lens of the eye, effective epithelium of the nose, epithelium of the mouth, epithelium of the anal cavity, your orifices. Imagine that you went to a strip mall and then you found the office of a freaking dermatologist next to hair and nail salon and then there was a gym a dentist and a plastic surgeon there was an optometrist next to a drug dealer and the last office was a freaking proctologist with big lips it's time to take it to the next level vectoral association what the flip is this first let me tell you what an association is there is a difference among sequence syndrome and association what's a sequence Number one, caused. Number two, caused. Number three, that's just part of sequence. You have first symptom, which caused to something, which led to something else. How about a syndrome? You have one stinking pathological cause, and then it led to one, two, and three, and they have absolutely nothing to do with each other, except for the fact that they started from a common pathological cause. Example, Down syndrome. What is the common pathological cause? Trisomy 21. This is the common pathological cause. And it leads to gazillion symptoms. One has absolutely nothing to do with the other. Example, what does the single palmar crease have to do with a flat occiput? Absolutely nothing. What does a slanted palpebral fissure have to do with increased risk of Alzheimer's dementia? Nothing. It's just they came from a single stinking pathological cause. That is a syndrome. An association, however, is one, two, and three, and there is no pathological... There is, we have no idea why this happened. They just happened together for some reason. Case in point, vector association. Why is this patient having vertebral defects, anal atresia, cardiac defect, tracheoesophageal fistula, renal defect, and limb defect? Absolutely no clue. That is an association. If you want a clue, all of these are structures derived from the mesoderm. So it's probably a mesodermal defect. Why did it happen? What is the pathological cause? What's the etiology? What's the underlying mechanism? No idea. That's why we called it an association. Let's talk about the neural crest derivatives from Picmonic. Okay, can you remind me? What are the derivatives of the neural crest? Oh, we already know about the peripheral nerves, which are spinal nerves or cranial nerves. Thank you. All of the ganglia, including the adrenal medulla, which is a modified ganglion. And then you have the, the leptomeninges, the pia and the arachnoid. But we have more. Let's do it. So, in order to understand and memorize the derivatives, just remember California Motel as. What is the C? Craniofacial structures. What is the A? Arachnoid and pia. These are the leptomeninges. Here is the arachnid, here is the pi. Arachnoid, pia. The M is the melanocyte. Here are the melon of melanie. The O is odontoblast. Here is a freaking dentist with a big O. T, tracheal cartilage. And then E, enterochromaffin cells of the adrenal medulla because it's a modified ganglion. Laryngeal cartilage. So not just tracheal cartilage, but laryngeal cartilage as well. Next, you have all of the ganglia. Here is the ganglion. Schwann cells, because we are peripheral. Here is the swan. And last, we have the spiral septum or the aortico-pulmonary septum of the heart. It was a septum between your aorta and your pulmonary chunk. This is not just a picture like this. It's a video, and you can watch the video as well as thousands of other animated medical mnemonics like this by going to picmonic.com slash VIP hookup slash medicosis. This is my favorite website, hands down. If you want to learn more about neuro, I have a neuropharmacology course on my website, medicosisperfectionalis.com, to learn about anti-epileptics, antidepressants, antipsychotics, anti-Parkinson medications, opiates, anesthetics, stimulants, sedatives, hypnotic, etc. And I have another course about autonomic pharmacology. Learn about nicotinic, muscarinic, alpha, beta, M1, M2, M3, all of these agonists, antagonists, available on the same website. 
And because I love you, here is a 30% discount towards anything on my website. Use discount code SAVE30 for five students only. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website, download my neuro courses. Go to Picmonic for animated medical mnemonics. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.